Hi all. Um, this man on the picture now that I'm showing you, I don't know, maybe some of you recognize him and some others, probably young chess players will not recognize this picture was because it was taken quite a long time ago in 1979. I'll show you another picture and maybe you recognize this grandmaster then. Okay, now I suppose that you recognize this man. It's the Dutch Grandmaster, Jan Timon. Um, what I want to do now is show you a part of a game that he played against Nigel Short. Uh, it's the last part of the game and what I've been doing is, since my last video where I talked about recognizing patterns, um, I've been looking at different Grandmaster games um, to see how they use this idea of pattern recognition and how that helps them to find the way to play a certain position. So in this next fragment I will emphasize the um, the patterns in the position so we can see how Jan Timan used these patterns to um, find out his plans and his moves it's a very short um, short fragment, the last few moves of a game, but I think they will make this idea of uh, pattern recognition and using patterns in a game um, will make that idea very, very clear. Okay, now let's have a look at this position and let's first simply look at what we recognize, what the characteristics are of the position um, and we see here, for example, this important pawn on d5, uh, I'm sorry, on e5, it's past pawn, and that's one of White's main main weapons in this position. Another thing that we can see is that there is here a diagonal that's open towards the king, and if we look in terms of recognizing patterns. In my previous video, previous video, I showed you a mating pattern, and patterns are, of course, not always mating patterns. A fork is also a pattern. So, if we look at this position right now, we can see, for example, that rook and queen could be forked by a knight from this square or this square. That's also a pattern. We also see that rook and knight could be forked by a pawn from this square. So, if we look at the position that way, we will not only recognize the positional aspects, like the past pawn here, but also the tactical possibilities. Now, of course, we must not do this only for um, for our own pieces, but also for what can work against us. In this case, for example, we see that the Black Knight and the Queen are both directed towards F2. So that means that our Queen on F4 has an important task to take care of F2. And we also see that this Rook is indirectly attacking our Queen. That means that if this pawn would not be here, White would be in big trouble. But luckily for, for White, the pawn on f5 is blocking this f-file. Now, watching this, let's have a look at the rest of the game. It's White to move here, and the White player is Jan Timon, the Dutch Grandmaster and he's playing against Nigel Short and he played e6, the first move of course based on this pattern that we already saw the forking pattern with the pawn on e7 now to prevent this black took the knight, bishop takes knight so now the e7 square is no longer defended by the white knight, so the pawn cannot advance 
forking Rukan knights. The rook took, and the queen had to go away from there. Queen a3. Now, white continued playing with this idea of the, the fork pattern. What he did is, Jan Timon played his rook to d7. Rook on the 7th rank, that's the positional aspect. And the tactical aspect is that now we are threatening again this to form this pattern. Black, to prevent this, played the knight to c6. So the knight now is taking care of e7 and has gone away from this uh, place where it could be forked. White now took the knight and after black took back, white played e7. Now this pass pawning is advancing dangerously and already we start seeing a new pattern. And it is a mate pattern and I don't know if you recognize it. It is in, in many many books. You can you can see it um, because it's actually very beautiful. I show you by showing you the moves in the game. It has it has to do with this open diagonal here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong key like that. And it has to do with this knight that can go to f7. And it has, it has also to do with this queen that can go to this diagonal towards g8. Maybe you now, after hearing these hints, understand what pattern I'm talking about. Let's continue. Rook to e8. The rook was attacked. And there we go. Queen c4 check. King must go to the corner. And now here is the mating pattern. Knight f7, king g8, knight h6, king goes to h8, queen g8, and after rook takes queen, the knight gives mate on f7. Now this mating pattern is a very beautiful one, and it's it's in, in many, many learning books, and as you see, it happens, even in Grandmaster games. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.